Well, hey guys, we're doing a drum brake video today. Not really wanted to do a drum brake video because, you know, once you've done one set of drum brakes, you've done them all. However, this one is a little bit different because we've got a noise we got to fix. So, if you haven't recognized the truck, it's our shop truck, Rudy. Our 01 Ranger. We're trying to get him ready for our yearly trip to New York. And we drove him to Nashville the other day to get some parts. Squeak, squeak, squeak. All the way down and all the way back. So I know where the squeaking's coming from. It's coming from the drum. The uh, adjusting finger that goes along the bottom where the wheel sits. To adjust your drum. Your shoes out. Isn't making contact with the, the wheel. It's making contact with the bottom of the drum. So what we're going to do today is we're going to tear everything apart. We're going to, we've got a couple of the old shoes we're going to compare the parts to to make sure that if there's anything that we need to do, such as like a relief cut, or maybe we need to get a different adjusting wheel, we can get it done. Because this truck's got to tow a trailer. 1100 miles actually 2200 miles because it's got to take it up and then come back with it and I don't want any issues So we're going to start off with our 19 millimeter socket. We're going to pull this tire off We're going to pull the drum off and then I'm going to show you what we're dealing with here. So let's get this tire off Set our tire over here somewhere Set it over there All right, and then we'll get you in here you can see what we're doing here. All right, let's pull our drum off. All right, you see all that brake dust in there. You see this groove right here that my thumb's on? That's the groove we're talking about. That's the squeaky squeak. And it looks like it's shoot off the bottom. I'm gonna show you the bottom of the, um, bottom of the brakes here. See that? camera doesn't do it justice I can stick my finger in there that's supposed to sit up here but let me show you something if we push that finger up you see what it does to the cable somewhere in here we don't have it set right so we're gonna tear it all the way down I don't know if I really want to mess with those uh, things here but we're going to tear it all the way down. We're going to inspect the shoes. We're going to see if we did something wrong. We're going to fix it. We ain't got much time, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get our springs off the top. You can do this any way you want. I used to do it with a flathead screwdriver until I started getting my fingers wrapped with it. So now we're going to use some offset channel locks. Reach in, go as far down to the end as you possibly can. And you want to grab this spring. You just want to pick it up and pull it off, just like that. And then you take this side here and you do the same thing on this side. Pick it up. Oh, this one wants to be a little bit of a headache. Sometimes I'll use vice grips on these too, depending on what mood I'm in. And it's going to let our springs hang. Okay. Then we got to get up here. We're going to pick up our finger. We're going to pull that cable back. Pull it back and off. Okay. All right. And we're going to take our adjuster piece out. Now, I've seen some of them sit them like this inside here. The reason that it's not set that way on this truck is because this had the OEM brakes on it from 2001. So I set it back the way it was. If our problem is that I need to turn this around, hey, that's an okay problem to have in my book. I didn't change the wheel cylinder because the wheel cylinder doesn't leak, it works fine. The only thing wrong with this truck was the pad surface had worn out on the old shoes. That's the only reason I did the brakes on the truck. All right, so we need to get you down here where you can see where we're going to be next. Okay, we're coming down here on this uh, tang right here. We're going to 
use a flathead screwdriver, we're going to pop this spring. Okay, so we're going to pop this spring. And just for your reference, if you're wanting to know the history of this, this was hanging down with the old set, so I don't know if it might be a manufacturer's defect. That's how I hooked the spring. When it was originally on the truck, it was hooked like this. See how it's like that? That's how it was originally. My mom's got a Dodge Dakota. They use this setup, and hers is set up like this, and it works just fine. That's what it's been doing to the bottom of this adjuster finger right there. That's where it's been making contact with the drum and squeaking. So we got to find out why and then fix it. So let's go ahead and you can leave the spring attached to that pin right there. It makes no difference. All right, so I guess we're taking the shoes off. So I'll show you how I take the shoes off. Grab your favorite pair of vice grips. And you're going to have to sit over here, but you can still see what we're doing. All right, take your finger in the back. Hold the pin in place. Grab it with your vice grips actually we're gonna have to open these up a little bit more and we're gonna lock this down if it's something stupid like this is not lined up I am going to be so surprised not really knowing Fords as much as I do nothing surprises me anymore The fact that we're losing pads or the shoes shoe so much already indicates that those aren't set right. So what I might do is I might just roll it down to where it just starts to move and then you gotta get your vice grips in here. You push back and turn, or you can push back and rotate the pin. if you can get the pin to stay put. You don't want to squeeze this so hard that it squishes that cap because you need that cap to stay as round as possible. All right, so we got that spring off. We'll leave the pin in. We're gonna pull this shoe off since this is the offending shoe. We're going to uh, examine it and see what we have to do to make it right. Now there's a little spring, you can't see it, but it sits up behind the axle, right up where my finger's at. That spring is hooked in on this side. There's like a little uh, S hook in it. It hooks to this back shoe, and then the actual hook sits in the front shoe. So we have to disengage that spring. So let's find us our spring tool here. Get a grab on it. It's a small spring, so it's not gonna it's not gonna be too much of an issue. We just gotta get the spring off. Oh, it wants to be an issue though. Alright, let's see if we can get that spring loose. Right, we're gonna have to take the other shoe off. All right, so perfectly fine. We're ready to do that. So let me whip you around over here so you can see what we're doing on this side. All right, so now we're going to take this side apart. There's the spring I was talking about right there. I can show you how we can do it with these two channel locks. Sometimes I've done it this way. You want to get it, I think, the second or third slot, depending on the size of your... Uh, something else i want to mention too rangers came with both nine inch and ten inch drums there's a few different ways you can tell if, which ones you have if you have four wheel drive regardless of engine size you have the 10 inch rear end okay if you have two wheel drive and you have the two three or the two five you're going to have a nine inch okay how you can tell which one you have is you take your drum off, you flip it up on the back side, 
the side that goes on here and you measure the distance from one side of the drum to the other side of the drum and it should be relatively close to being either 9 or 10 inches another way you can tell which which brakes you have is the 9 inch doesn't have okay on the up here on the wheel cylinder the 10 inch will have a a um, extension coming out of the shoe or out of the wheel cylinder the nine inch doesn't the nine inch goes right into the cap so that's the other way you can tell doesn't matter what year your truck is it's going to be the same ford did do that much they kept it consistent with that and i think i might have found our problem although i don't want to con confirm it as of yet but i think we might have because this side is going to be very difficult I can't seem to get this side to come free right, let's push this out this shoe don't want to come off which is weird that, there we go I had it turning there we go alright so let's take our shoe off let's take our brakes apart now now you can just peel it off. Be careful about your, uh, see I, I greased it in the right spot, so I had it all ready to go. I just, all right. And then we need to peel this down off right there. And you can see the back, you might be able to see the back of the spring right there. All right, the other thing on the nine inch, I'll show you the parking brake lever. All right, so let's take our brakes off. On the nine inch, your parking brake lever has a slot in it, okay? And I think we might need a new parking lever because I don't think this one's actually putting the tension we need on the, uh, this is your spreader bar, okay? You wanna pay attention to which way your spreader bar goes. It only goes in one way. So if you put it in the wrong way, it won't set all the way. You're going to have to flip it over. All right. And then check your wheel cylinders. This one's fine. I am no, I have no issues with it. Although we're going to need a... We're going to have to put bearings in this truck soon. Yeah, I don't disconnect it from here because this spring... It looks like it's not a big deal, but it's a huge deal. Trust me, I don't mess with that at all. You can let it hang down if you want to. Okay, so for the comparison part of the show, let's bring you over here to our uh, tarp. All right, here's the set of brakes we just pulled off. You can see that spring right there that I was showing you. That's our front. That's our back. Here's our, our uh, wheel. Now on some of these, they do have a wavy washer on here, but if yours doesn't, don't worry about it. We're going to rotate this all the way down. Okay. Rotate that all the way down, set it to the side. Now we're going to grab our old shoes, which I have right here. Okay, these are our old Ford shoes. You can see the spring in the back side like I have it on that one we can set our our shoes up and we can compare them to the new shoes and see if there's anything different that we need to be aware of and there you can get a good view of everything let me pull this spring off this right here so we can get a good view of everything all right, so looks like our holes are in the same spots there. Parking brake lever goes in the right spots there. This looks good here. This is where your uh, spreader bar goes. Okay, these holes look good. These holes look good. Okay, that all that looks good. Looks like we're okay on the on the back shoe. So, let's take our really worn out front shoe and we'll set our front shoe on top of the other one 
Okay, the other thing you want to do is you want to line your shoes up the best you can. Okay. Well, there is a slight difference, but not enough to cause a problem. Let me show you the slight difference. On the OEM shoe, which is the top one, you got a little bit more surface than you do on the uh, aftermarket shoe. See, that's the only difference is just a tiny little bit more surface. Let's look at our front shoe. Looks like everything's the same. All the spots are the same. So it must have been when I put them on the truck. Of course, we check your backing plate out. Pretty damn nice isn't it yeah i'm probably gonna put some more uh grease on here don't use anti-seize on these it's pointless i know there's a couple youtubers out there that use anti-seize like it's their job and unless you're getting a kickback from permatex i wouldn't bother brake grease caliper grease is all i use you can use wheel bearing grease if you want to if you want to if you overkill you can use wheel bearing grease but i use just regular old brake caliper grease works just fine so now that we've determined that we don't have any real big problems with all of our holes line up where they're supposed to it must have been a mounting issue so i'm going to go get my grease we're going to grease this up i'm going to get some brake clean we're going to uh, clean this up real good and we're going to put the shoes back on paying close attention to our spreader here or our wheel because i'm pretty sure this is where our problem's coming from because uh, if this isn't set right it's going to cause the slack that we saw in the cable and that's going to cause that finger to fall so i'll be right back all right got my grease i got us some Right clean we're gonna pull our pins out just for the sole purpose of cleaning the back of this um rotor or the backing plate it's easier to do it because when you wipe it down it's easier to wipe it down all right I'll go ahead and clean this up real quick and if you want you can put a rag down or a towel down or a catch to break clean but I'm trying to kill my grass here so that I can not feel so bad about putting in my floor that I should have had halfway done by now see I haven't had the time nor the resources to do my shop updates that I've been trying to get to it's been mainly time because I've been I don't know if I've mentioned this on any of my videos but i've been working back to back non-stop since february and it's 26th of july when i'm taping this so this has been the first week i've had of any kind of slow time and i've had to work on a cadillac that's sitting over in my bay too so you just want to kind of just go around this thing here and just kind of do this with it You got some points down here you got to get some of them you can't see now I also go up in here with it because your top of your shoes sit up in here but uh, that's all that I do and all I use is my brake caliper grease so it's all you need nothing special okay so the next part might turn into comedy hour because uh, I really hate putting these shoes on I really hate shoes doing these shoes but we're going to try to install our shoes don't worry about that long spring right here we're going to hook that up towards the end since it's really a light duty spring you see how i was telling you before it s hooks into the pad or into the shoe right there all right so we got to put our push pins back in and have our springs on the ready so put those together all right and then we need to set our shoe up on our backing plate 
set it in this bottom hole right here. Don't worry about getting it perfect, we'll do that later. Now holding it like this, line your pins up. If you want to turn it to where it's 90 degree angle because your vice grips are too big for your area, you can definitely do that. What we're going to do is we're going to do the pin rotation method. The pin rotation method is where when you get the shoe on and you get the spring and the keeper through the pin while holding the, well, you'll see in a minute. We're going to get our pin turned to 90 degrees or straight up. Okay. We'll hold our shoe in place with one hand. We're going to take our spring. We're going to press our spring into our pin and then from the back while holding the pin in place. Let's see, we've got to push that further back. And then we've got to take our pin. We've got to get our pin straightened out again. Well, I just did that and it took like two seconds after I turned the camera off. Oh, you got to remember to hook up your uh, parking brake cable. So, you see how we got it kind of cattywampus up in there? I'll show you how we fix that. We take our flathead screwdriver and we pry up on it just a little bit because we got to get it lined up. It's not lined up. See that? It's not lined up. All right. And then we got to shove that in there like that. Now, you see how we're, we're kind of crooked on our spring. So, I kind of wonder if maybe that's our problem. So, we got to make sure our spring's straight. Don't worry about lining this up. The, the uh, upper and the lower springs will do that for you. All right thing came off if this pops off it goes just like this just take it down here you lock the back of it into the shoe you push it down onto the pivot pin all right now we got to put the front shoe back on front shoe usually isn't that bad i mean yeah it fought me last time but the goal here is that when you're all done where these little rides are right here those are supposed to rest up on these pit these points here if they don't, then the shoe's out of alignment and you have to realign the shoe. All right, so that spring goes inside right here on this, down here on this first hook right there. So, and then you roll this up onto that lower area like you did on the back side. The spring comes out, that's fine because the spring's going to come out it's a it's a light tension spring so it's not going to be like a great big you know you're not going to have to he-man it back in there but um we do have to hook this uh we have to put our retaining spring into this front shoe so we're gonna get our we're gonna let our shoe kind of hang loose there for a minute we're gonna bring you over here so you can see what we're doing all right sit you right there while I get my vice grips ready. We get our vice grips ready. Here we see we're going to get our vice grips ready. Now I do have a pair of needle nose vice grips, but uh, they only work like half the time because they're the cheapo version that you get from Walmart. Back before Walmart had decent tools, which they still don't, but you know. All right. So you see our pin sitting in the back over here. We're going to lift our shoe up to where it's on our pin. Make sure you don't get it jammed up inside the top of the brake assembly. We're going to set our pin. So on this one, we're sitting parallel. So we're going to turn our pin to face the same direction. And we're going to push this on there and we're going to hold it with one hand while we rotate the pin with our fingers. And it's like that and we're done. That's probably the fastest I've ever done this. All right, we got our shoes on. We got to get our 
our spring attached. We gotta hook our, we gotta hook it up to that back end over there. So we're gonna grab our pliers. Cause you got a hole on each side where this spring lifts. And this one lives up in that hole right there. You might be able to get it to go with your brake spring pliers, but I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Especially because this thing wants to rotate on me as I try to get it back up into the hole. Let's see if we can get in there. Let's try the needle nose for this one because I usually don't have this spring pop out. So this spring usually stays in. But you got to hold it up like this. And maybe we can grab it with our needle nose and kind of slide it into that position here. If we can get our needle nose to work properly. Hold it tight, slide it over, lock it in like that, just like that. All right, so we need to put our spreader bar in, but we also need to put our adjuster in down at the bottom. So we're gonna put our spreader bar in next. That goes like this. Your spring goes towards the front of the vehicle or opposite the parking brake. You slide this down like this, you rotate it, and then you just slide it into the back and then you lock it into the shoe on the front it'll naturally because the back is wider than the front it'll lock into the parking brake lever and the shoe perfectly normal you want it to do that don't try to separate the two on the back if you try to separate the two you're going to damage your parking brake lever or you're going to break the spreader bar you got to have the spreader bar. It's very important to the operation of this whole system. Okay. So we need to get our uh, adjuster wheel. I guess that's what they call it. Adjuster wheel. Adjuster wheel looks like this. This side here goes towards the back. This side here goes towards the front. I don't know if you can see me doing this, but uh, let me get you in a position where you can see how I installed this thing. You see where we got to be down here? And I'm going to try to get you set up where you can see what we're doing. Can you see okay right there? Yeah, you can see okay right there. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to open this up. You're going to take this end. You're going to put it in this notch right here make sure it fits nice and flush inside that notch you're going to rotate the back part of the spreader you're going to take a screwdriver preferably the biggest screwdriver you own in this case it's the second biggest which is mr green you take him we're going to take him and we're going to put him in the back here find a spot somewhere down in here and you're going to pry this shoe back Ow, ow, ow. Try not to pinch your fingers doing this because you will pinch your fingers if you're not careful. Pull this back. If it comes out of alignment on the top, don't worry about it. We'll fix it later. Get down in here. Pry this shoe out so that you can get your spreader in. Let's try it this way. Let's put the back of it in. If this spring keeps coming off, just set it down on the ground. You want to hold this back as far as you can. So you want to take your screwdriver, set it between the uh, hub, pry it back as far as you can. Get this piece in. Okay. Then you want to come over here and do the same thing on this side. You want to get it down in here. You're going to lose pieces, but that's fine. I'm going to spread this out as far out as you can go with it. Because you got to get that adjuster wheel in there. Otherwise, this whole thing is going to be for nothing. Then you can pick up your pieces that you lost, put them back together, and then reset your shoe. And see the. I'll show you how this goes together in a minute. Because I got to get this back shoe lined back up where it needs to be. 
All right, and we got to pull this front shoe forward. We got to push down on the front shoe. Okay, so you see what we did here? We got our adjuster wheel caught up in the works. Take a screwdriver, pry it down, get it locked down in a position, and you can reset your front shoe. Make sure your spreader bar gets locked in there as well, and don't lose your adjuster wheel because sometimes as you're adjusting the front, the top here, you're going to end up losing your. Uh, uh, there we go. Now it's almost there. We got to hold it steady here and then take your screwdriver, reach up from the bottom, pry back till it locks into place. All right now, at this time, you want to make sure that you have this uh, right inside where it's supposed to go. If it's hanging down too low or if it's up too high, it's going to cause a problem. It has to sit inside that notch, okay? Now that we got that done, we can start hooking up our adjuster assembly. So to do that, you're going to take your spring. I hope you can see all of this. You're going to take your spring, put you back up here on the pod so I can show you this stuff. You take your spring and you're going to respring it down here okay now you have to pay attention which way this spring goes in because if you put it in backwards first of all it's not going to work and second of all you're going to have to take it back apart again anyway so take your spring lock it down pick it up with your finger push it back okay it can live there for right now you got to have this um notch here open because that's where your finger is going to lock to so we're going to take our somewhat busted finger by the way this is brand new i just replaced it you're going to take it and you're going to slide it up in place you're going to take your spring that you just installed and you're going to use if and you're going to use a screwdriver it doesn't have to be a big one it might be a small one or whatever you have handy nearby so we'll use the mini, the mini screwdriver We'll use our mini screwdriver and you're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to push back with your finger take your screwdriver put it up between the finger and the spring lift it up snap it over top like that okay now your finger is in place see it's supposed to sit like that but we don't have a cable to hook it to yet okay so that's what we're going to do next we're going to hook up our cable our cable i don't know if you can see the back of that finger very well all right, yeah, you can, you can see it. Back of the finger's right here. Take your cable. You want your cable with the spring facing forward because when it goes on, you want your uh, hoop to be facing out like this because that's how it was originally. So you can hook it up any way you want. I'm gonna hook it up this way. Pick your finger up, pull that down in there like that. All right, so we got our cable dangling down. You can see this hole right here. We got to put our guide on that hole right there. So the way we're going to do it is uh, you can do it any way you want, but the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to do it like this. Try to press it into the hole use the back of a screwdriver if you can just kind of excuse me press it down into the hole there all right got to hook it to the top now this has to go on first so if you want to just kind of well we're going to do it this way we have to put our pad keeper on we're going to put this one on upside down this time instead of the other way around I'm going to see if it makes a difference. It might make all the difference. Then again, it may not do anything. But we got to get that. There's a uh, step down right here that this sits on. So we got to push that back till it's on the step down. And you'll know you got it right when it's sitting flat against the pivot or the pin. You can let it hang down until you get your first spring on. Then after you get your first spring on, You'll hold it up like that, put the spring on it, because you got to put this on first. So you'll hold it like this. We're going to use our drum spring, 
We're going to use our drum brake spring tool, which you've not seen me use yet on the channel. Can't do that one yet. We got to do the green spring first. All right, we'll hold on a minute here. We'll reset our. I just remember that we got to do the front spring first because otherwise the front spring won't function right. So let's direct your attention to this green spring right here. We'll hook it with our tool. We're going to bring it around front. And we're going to let it slide its way down and lock into place. Now you see how that little retainer moved because this shoe got in the way? Let me show you how we fix that. Take a screwdriver, go up into the top of the pivot point, pull back. When you pull back, push towards the center of the vehicle. That'll move that back and line that up. Now, what we need to do is we need to see if our pivot is set up right so if it's set up right and it's not because you can see this the metal right there you see where the pivot changes from where it needs to be we got a gap right there okay we need to get that gap out we're not going to unhook the spring but what we're going to do is we're going to move some stuff around so let me show you how we do that you take your screwdriver and you're going to take a screwdriver and you're going to pry back just a little bit. And then you're going to take your other screwdriver and you're going to somehow get that pivot to line back up. You can't see the center of the hole on the, on the adjust alignment tool. But you can see if you look at it enough, you can see what we're doing here got to get this thing lined up because if you don't line this thing up you're not going to get your other spring on and the last thing you want to do is tear this all back apart just for that which i don't do that i'm going to make it work one way or the other now some people yeah, see because we can just show that around like that because we can't get our other spring to go on because there's no room for it to attach so what I need to do is I need to see what it looks like back there. Got to get that pin. All right, so it looks like it's got to go down. So let's knock it down a little bit here. See that? Popped right into place. Once that pivot's lined up, then you're going to have a, a space for your other spring. So you want to kind of take a screwdriver and pry that front spring that we just hooked up, push it to the back. Then we're going to take our spring tool. We're going to hook our white spring this time like this. We're going to do the same thing on this spring. We're going to pull the pivot together and we're going to let it slide down and we're on. See that? That's this part. This part takes them off this one's worn out because you see it should have a little bit of a, a point on the end of it to grab the spring with and this one's a little worn out but this side still works just fine and then we have our pliers here which on some brakes you got to hook the top of it and pull it back this is not one of those i think the 10 inch brakes work that way but the nine inch don't okay so we got to get our cable up here let me move you over here so we can show you what we're doing Okay, all of our springs are connected, but we've got to hook up our, our uh, adjuster cable. So we're going to reach down underneath here. We're going to pick up on our finger. And we're going to take a screwdriver. Let me show you how we do this with the screwdriver. Method. You can do it by hand if you can get this thing to go up high enough. But you got to situate yourself. You're going to take a screwdriver and we're going to just push it over on top of that little carry thing, that tray right there. Oh, look at that. We must have done something right because our uh, fingers up against our, look, I'm gonna show you this guys. Yes, that is what it looks like when it's all done. You see how it's right up against the uh, fingers? It's nice and solid, it's correct. I don't know what we did differently this time, but uh, well, let's look at let's look at our springs. That one looks good. Whip it on over here. 
That side looks good. Flip it on over here. That looks good. Of course, there's our spring on the back that we hooked up. Yep, I think we figured it out, guys. I think what it was is I had the shoes on cattywampus because these springs were kind of... Uh, if you go back to the beginning of the video and see how these springs were stressed... Uh, I didn't have the shoes on right, which, you know, even us professionals, we have our days. And I just readjusted that and then um, we turned this piece upside down because I think that had something to do with it too. And look at that. We're good to go. So OEM has this thing facing the other way like it was in the beginning of the video. I guess when you put new shoes on it and you go aftermarket with it, you have to rotate it upside down. I don't know why, but apparently it works because we are successful. We have done a successful brake job. Now to adjust this, let me show you how we adjust this. You're going to have to move this wheel down here. But because of how much surface was on the inside of that drum when we started, I'm not going to go completely crazy with it because I think it was trying to work, but it wasn't working. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to just kind of, oh, you can hear it clicking now. Hear that? It's clicking now. It didn't click before. So we must have done something right. Take your screwdriver. Let me see where my screwdriver is. No, you can't. Come over here. Take a look. Get a good look here, guys, because we're going to show you how you adjust your drum brakes. All right, you can see your little adjuster wheel down here. Take your finger, or your, your screwdriver, and you're going to lift up on it. It's going to push it out. You don't want to do this too many times, though. All right, so we're going to act like the tone wheel. Okay, so, or the adjuster wheel. We're actually going to push down on it, because pushing up on it would would uh, close it so we got to turn it this way now on the other side you want to push up on it because it's going to be opposite see how it's getting locked up in there so we're going to pull our finger down just a skosh just enough to get our screwdriver back in there and we're going to do some adjustments here i think we're let's push that back up where it was okay I think that's as far as it's going to go. So we're going to take our drum. We might want to clean the drum out again. Let's go ahead and clean our drum out real quick. Make sure that we get all the crap out of it. Oh, I want to show you this. When taking your drum and cleaning it, let me direct your attention to the side here hold it at an angle or you can hold it up in the air spray around the top first and as you can see it's all falling out down underneath that's how you want to clean your drums out and then take your rag and wipe the drum dry even though brake clean is fast drying you just want to do this yeah you can see we have a little bit of a, a heat ridge starting right here on our drum because these were not properly adjusted. So that might have been my pulsing feeling that I felt when I was hitting the brakes on the way home from my trip the other day. A little music making right there. Now your drum's going to be a little loose because of how it was manufactured. I'm going to call that good. I'm going to let the self-adjuster do its job. And we're going to call this brake job done. We're going to get our tire put back on. And we're going to get our wheels torqued to 100 foot-pounds. And we're going to... I'm going to take it out and drive it. And see if I got rid of the noises. I might have to repeat this procedure on the passenger side. But at least I know now that i got to take it all back apart and put it all back together again. Let the noise go away. Oh, that's another thing you can do. Since, we heard, since I heard the noise with the wheel on. And... Everything changes when you add weight to it. We're going to put the tire back on and then we're going to rotate the tire and see if we hear a squeak. If we don't hear a squeak, then our job's done and we can move on. If we still hear a squeak, then at that point you're going to stop bumping your camera. 
you're going to um, basically assess the severity of said squeak and determine whether driving the vehicle with the squeak is a good course of action. Personally, I don't like driving a vehicle with a squeak unless it's a suspension squeak. If it's a brake related squeak, I don't like to drive them because you can damage a whole bunch of stuff. Get our gun on here, we'll get this lined up here and we'll zip these back on. Pull our part back so you don't hear the part. Sounds good to me. I think we're ready to go. So with that, we're gonna put our we're gonna torque our tire down, 100 foot pounds, put our cap back on. We're good to go, folks. So if this helped you out, make sure to like. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the little bell. So that way when uh, I get some new content out for you, you can uh, be aware of it. So anyway, I'm out of here. I'll see you next time. Be careful out there.